What's up everyone, it's Cloud Chief, and in today's video, I'm going over the Unity NM, Emperor Arthro. This Crab NM, you can pop in Jugner Forest at I6, I9, or J11 for 1800 Unity Accolades. And this NM is a level 122 NM. This NM isn't that bad at all if you actually have the right setup and the right strategy going into it. Otherwise, you could struggle. But before we get into the strategy, let's take a look at its drops. First, let's look at the pants. Pants aren't actually bad, but they're also not that great. A good mix of just kind of everything. They have some decent attributes on it along with HP. There's some attack, some magic attack, some evasion on it, decent amount of haste, conserve MP, and then one to three double attack depending on your unity. And that's all well and good and I can see someone using this if you recently got to 119 as a newer player and I can see you getting use out of this. I don't think I would go out of my way to get this, but I mean if I had it I might use it, especially for like the magic attack. And then there's the belt. And this belt is actually really good. It's got 9 haste, 2 triple attack, and then depending on your unity ranking, 10 to 15 attack. And pretty much any melee job can really use it just by looking at the list. So. If you really need haste, considering haste isn't really as needed anymore, so depending on your gear situations, if you need a decent bit of haste, I think this would be a great belt for you to use. Now, I don't particularly use this on my main anymore, there was a point where I was using it, but the thing about it is when you start getting your jobs well geared, typically you're going to be using your belt slot for something else. But early on, when you're still gearing up, this is a fantastic piece to use. And like I just said, you're going to replace it eventually. But considering how easy this NM is, you should really go out of your way and get the belt if you can, if you are still somewhat a new returning player and still gearing yourself up. It's just really nice to make sure you're at haste cap and just gives you more flexibility on what you can do for your gear. So now let's jump in and actually talk about the NM itself. There's a few funky things with this NM. Uh, first off, whenever he does a TP move or he is casting Waterga 5, he gets ridiculous damage taken down. Like negative 99% damage taken. You're only going to be doing 0 to 1 damage so you pretty much need to be putting out your big damage numbers when he is auto attacking. In terms of TP moves, he just uses all standard crab moves. There's not really anything out of the ordinary. He will though, however, multi-attack a lot of times. There's times where you definitely can see him swing four and five times in a row. He will also periodically do hundred fists thing about it is when he does 100 fists he will not cast it all and he won't do any TP moves he will just continually auto attack so this is when you know you can be dumping your damage in and that's really what you want to do is be focusing your skill chains and magic bursts on the NM when 100 fists is going off you can do it when he's just auto attacking like after he does a TP move or right after he finishes uh, casting water to five but 100 fists are really when you know you can maximize your damage output because he won't have the damage taken up then. So with that, really the name of the game is Skill Chains and Magic Bursts. That's honestly the best way you can take this NM down is you want to be magic bursting. So with that, we're going to move into the job setup that you kind of need with trusts if you want to take it down efficiently. Also, I tried attempting this NM at 118 and was basically unable to do it. I'm sure I could have banged my head against it and have cleared it in 118 gear, but I honestly don't think it's worth it. I think because of how hard he hits during 100 fists and 
the water gust spell, how much damage it does. At 118, your trusts just aren't really up to snuff to do this. You really do need to be 119. However, I was able to do it in not very good 119 gear. So I think pretty much as long as you have the right truss set up, I don't think you really need to have any required gear as long as you are 119 and making your truss 119. So with that, the roles I think that you really need is that you need a tank, you need a healer, you need an AoE backup healer, and I'll get into what I mean by that, red mage support, someone who's going to help you skill chain, and then your magic burster. And the thing about it is you could technically fill in any of these roles and you would just need to make adjustments for who you're going to summon for your party to step into that role. So if you're coming into this as a melee DD, you're really going to be the person who's doing skill chains. So if you're going to use a tank trust, I really only recommend three of the trusts. Archangel Elvin, the Rune Fencer Taru for my second choice, and then August for my third choice. You just really need to have a solid tank that is going to one, be able to keep hate, and two, be able to live through 100 fists. I'm sure you could do it with some of the other trusts if you are actually providing additional support to make sure that they can survive through 100 fists, but even all the tanks that I just listed I've had ended up going down to 100 fists before. The Elven seem to have the highest survivability out of any of the tanks, followed by the Rune Fencer, and then August, which is why I put them in that order. Next, you just really need a healer. There's going to be damage coming in, and you're going to need a healer to heal it. You don't have to have a Puru or you are an Oran. They are really good and much stronger than your other healer trusts, but like Kupipi can be your only main healer as long as you have other backup and support, which we'll be talking about in a second. Next, let's talk about your Red Mage support. You want to have Phalanx, Haste 2, and then also some heals, and then even just some Magic Burst coming in. I recommend either using King of Hearts or Arcelia 2. I actually do not recommend using Korumoro. Korumoro quite often will go down if he gets hit by the Water Gut 5 move. And on top of that, he just doesn't really offer any offensive help. He's really only defensive, and he just can't really take hits. Whereas Arcelia 2 and King of Hearts can actually take the Water Go 5 hit and keep on going. Plus, they will also Magic Burst for you when Magic Bursts are going out, which are beneficial. Up next, the AoE Backup Support, or Backup Healer. After you take, like, AoE damage... These guys will actually respond with a TP move that'll heal. I recommend for this role either using Sethius or Iroa 2. Both of them have a move that when you take AoE damage, they will use that TP move and it'll actually AoE heal your party, which is pretty solid. If you want more sustain for your party, use Sethius. If you don't need as much support and you'd like to have more skill chains going off so that way your bursters can be magic bursting more often, then use Iroa 2. And then next, you really just need a skill chainer. So honestly for this, anyone you really like as a trust that you know is going to skill chain with whatever setup you're going to have. Iroa 2, Z2, the Golka. And Imea are all really good options for, you know, picking up skill chains and doing skill chains for you so your bursters are going to go off. If you have other trusts that you really like that give you skill chains frequently and work with whatever job you have that's going to be doing weapon skills with, use them. There's not really any set standard in here, but you need skill chains going off because that's where you're going to be getting your magic burst damage, and that's where you're getting the bulk of your damage in. And then, of course, that leads us right to the last position, and that is magic bursters. Shantato 2 is ideally your best magic burster. Robel Akel is also really good, and don't be afraid to use him. 
And Adelheid would be my last choice in the list, as she can also do some magic bursting. So, if you don't have anyone else to fall upon, don't be afraid to use her. But if you don't have Shantato too, because she's not always the easiest to get, then rely on Robel Akel. And you may, if he's your only burster, want to then actually have Sethius in as his one move will keep giving him MP back which will create sustain for your party and allow him to keep magic bursting so he doesn't get tapped out. Like I said, you can fill in any role. I definitely came in and tanked it both on Paladin and on Rune Fencer in just NQ Ambuscade gear and didn't really have too many problems. If you are going to be tanking it on Paladin, make sure you're saving Repraisal, Palisade, and Sentinel during 100 Fists as that's just going to make you easily live through those attacks going on even if you're not in, you know, great gear. For Rune Fencer, make sure you use uh, Patua during 100 Fists so that way you're getting all those parries in. It definitely helps with survival and that's when you can actually be getting a lot of skill chains and dumping damage in because you're going to get a ton of TP fed back to you. Also if you are the tank, you can actually run away from the mob and run away from the rest of your party when water go 5 is going off so it makes sure it only hits you so that way it's making it easier and less of an MP sponge on your healers. Plus if you're tanking you can make sure you're pulling it away from the rest of your trust so they're not going to get hit by AoE moves which I definitely recommend doing if you're the tank. If you're not the tank however you want to make sure that you have correct positioning. So that way your backline jobs, especially your bursters, aren't getting hit, especially by that initial cast that might happen as soon as you pop the NF. So what I recommend doing when you're ready to go is make sure you have your summons summoned in the correct order with your tank being summoned first. And then obviously your DD, if you have a DD, he's going to be skill chaining. If you have any healers that actually move on their own and run away, summon them as spacers. And make sure you have like your black mages in your you know, back line. And any people who are going to stay back, try and summon them last. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure you're a good distance away. And you want to run up to the ethereal junction so you can pop the nm and get so you can click it as far away as you can while also making sure that your trusts are all in a nice line make sure they don't like loop around and bunch up i've had only had that happen and it gets annoying make sure they're in a nice straight line behind you and pop the nm as far away as you can as soon as you pop it let the nm come to you pull out your weapon and then auto attack immediately from there any trust that will move up and auto attack it will move up into place. Any of your casters will stay where they are unless for some reason they need to inch up so where, that way they're at the proper casting range. By doing it that way you can pretty much guarantee that your backline jobs aren't going to get hit by AoE moves and then you're just kind of set making it better for your party. Because if you pop it with your whole party bunched up you are technically asking for issues because they're going to all get hit by the AoE. Whereas if you line them up in a nice line and pop the NM as far away as you can and that way the NM's coming to you you're guaranteeing that your trusts are in a nice setup so that way you're less likely to get destroyed by AoE we moves. And that about wraps up this Unity NM. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for supporting the channel. And as always, may you have success in all you do.